Okay, the meeting called to order. Back into from recess. Uh, at the last meeting, I had uh, Commissioner Baxton. I don't know if he was a citizen then or a commissioner say that I failed to ask call on him, and I did not see he had his hand up. So, do you have? Do you remember what your statement was or what you were no, going to say? No. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Sarah. That. We thought we had pretty much gone through everything in this particular budget. And I don't remember why we had a recess, but there was a reason. Anybody remember the exact? I know we wanted more information on a couple of things. Yes, for more information about the salary positions and about the uh, new position in the dining service. Item 12. I think um, how we handed out everything on dining services. This is on vacation. So if you just want to read through that and if you have any questions. The hard, the hard of what, he's, what Chris is looking for is a rounds cook, and how that ended up relating to the certified dietary manager is that he, he needs to have a utility position. The nature of the, the collective body and bargain agreement is when you have a department that has a lot of long-standing employees like Chris does, there's a lot of accrued vacation time off. And so it's a matter of how do you, how do you cover that? You can't do it just with per diems. A rounding cook kind of a flexible person covers for everybody, including that the turnover of the CDM that we're, we're talking about. But that's it's not a CDM position that we're hiring, just a, that we would propose and it'd be a rounds cook. Any other questions on that? I question came up on this snow blower or snow rake or whatever the heck it's called, uh, rotary power broom. And I remember it was only going to be used here, at, or thought they said here. And where would it be in the budget? It wasn't on the expenditure. Yeah, so that's, I, that's in capital. Okay. Was that in my capital? Under NBC 6, under the NBC on the first page. Sidewalk repair, rotary room. Okay. Thank you. Any thoughts or comments on the rotary room? I hate to get too anecdotal about this, but we just had a problem this past Sunday where we had snow, and we had a, a, a resident family member fall in the parking lot. We just got notified of that, you know, by the by the, the resident's family member today. So, you know, pedestrian access, you know, even in the middle of storms, are. Um, our residents are being visited or being brought back from church or being brought out. <coughs> and anything we can do to keep us safe is going to be a good investment. What, what, what time? Do we have details on what time that was? It, it, was at, it was at noontime on Sunday. I checked, the, I checked the film and snow started here in this parking lot at almost exactly 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, snow removal didn't start till 12.30. How much snow had fallen during the three and a half hours, I'm not really, can't tell by the, the camera on that yet. Okay. Right. It seemed to me that we are talking parking lot versus a room, which is for the sidewalks, was my impression. So I don't think that one pertains to the other. Uh, my question would be, following up on Representative Milani, was uh, where was DPW? If the parking lot hadn't been cleared by noon and snow started falling at nine o'clock in the morning, this the, the the fall nearest nearest we can tell we're still investigating was on the walkways and Mountain View maintenance staff typically take responsibility for the routine clearing of the sidewalks, not the roadway, not the parking lot, but but the sidewalks, the entranceway. It's kind of a shared responsibility. If it's a lot of snow and if it's at night. The House of Corrections takes care of the initial clearing, but our own staff is taking care of the sanding, salting, and sweeping by hand at this point. Well, yep. House of Corrections staff are clearing parking lots at night? They're doing the handwork of the sidewalks with a snowblower. I think he's referring to inmates, not inmates. staff. No, not yet. Not, not House of Corrections staff. <clears throat> House of Corrections guests. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 
Yep. Yeah, I, I think a power blower is a nominal cost compared to the cost of one person uh, falling. As far as sidewalks versus parking lot, you may very well use it to pick up the uh, sand in the springtime off your parking lot, and that would be a very appropriate use for this particular item. Um, and a, a comparable Arians model is $800 less. Um, and I just confirmed that looking up now. So uh, the, the quote that we have here is excessive compared to other places of getting that item. What is that deductible with primates? Uh, $1,000 per, per incident. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just to point out, um, no matter what we do, the likelihood that we're going to prevent all falls or slips is uh, Zero. non-existent. Yeah. Uh, it's going to happen at some point. And plowing three hours after a light storm begins is not unusual. This last uh, no fall was very light. Yep. Um, my concern would be that you know we've heard all along that uh, we cannot go out to RFP for someone to come in and clear parking lots and et cetera for us because it's a, a 24 by 7 operation and there's no one that will do it, which I disagree with uh, talking to people. But uh, now we're hearing that. Uh, on a morning, DPW is not available, and we have inmates um, in sidewalks and, and so forth. So I, I don't know what's going on. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. If I could, I, I didn't hear the DPW staff weren't available. I heard that the plowing started three hours later. And that may be the determination of what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Is there a ground rule for when they start? Uh, normally about two inches. So by by time, it's by, it's by snow. Yeah. So. I would expect it had already been um, that liquid salt had been put in before the storm. They have been doing prior treatment to be sure that it doesn't freeze. I, I think this discussion is probably best held during the DPW uh, meetings. This is oh, uh, as far as the plowing, yes. Yeah. Definitely for uh, nursing mm -hmm. home and the budget, it, the budget that we're looking at right now. Uh, right. Uh, what are we going to do as far as? Uh, Supporting the budget. Uh, I'm not sold on the new um, position yet. Okay. There's no increase in census. There's been no increase in foot traffic in the cafeteria. There's been no increase in revenues. Um, expanding an already budget that's already in the deficit is not in the best interest of the taxpayers. Did you say at the last meeting? That there was somebody that was going to be retiring, or he's training and somebody. Did we have we have two retirements coming up, but they're but they're budgeted for replacement. Okay. Well, I, I think for me it gets back to a previous request, and I think it's been requested by the chairman um, to the county uh, commissioners uh, for an organization chart because uh, I, I got very confused about. The new employees versus replacement and timing of this. Um, so I requested uh, new employees. We got a list of employees, but not new positions. Um, I requested vacant positions. Uh, none of that has been made available to us. Um, so. Yeah. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, it would be nice to have it okay. prior to that. That's fine. Any other comments? The only thing I was giving thought to on my drive home was, um, you know, do we need all the beds now? All the mattresses placed, replaced? Do we need some of the things on there? If we would be better giving a set amount for some of the new things they want and let them prioritize what they see as the need versus just saying, all right, you have, for the sake of our $50,000, you figure out the sequence that you need to do it. That was my only thought. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you. Um, this February 27 memo, uh, how we have um, I haven't had a chance to run through it. Can you uh, talk through it a bit? 
Not if you wanted to. It's, uh, it's just kind of the kind of the precursor. We went through it a, a little bit at the last meeting. Um, procedurally, what, what I suggested is that in order to take some of the pressure off of, and it hasn't been, it hasn't, it hasn't translated into action this year, but in the past years, sometimes it's been an effort to look at, at line items that have not been fully expended and to think that that's necessarily ripe for cutting. Doesn't mean that it shouldn't be looked at, but rather than create an incentive for supervisors to spend money, I'd rather see an incentive for them to save money and yet to protect the taxpayer to take the money that wasn't spent as an, as an amount that should be considered for essentially what isn't spent here goes into the undesignated fund balance. To consider that amount and any other amounts that you might need to separate from Mountain View to be able to reduce the amount to be raised by taxes so that the taxpayer wins and supervisors are still properly incentivized to do just as they're doing now to treat the money like their own and not spend it just because it's budgeted. I don't think you're recommending any cuts to last year's budget. No, you're not. We're, we're actually looking at this year's. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So I mean, that we're, we're anticipating something that has not has not come to fruition. Right. So, which is that? Um, and that being said, um, one of the thoughts I had in uh, the ride down this morning was I heard uh, concern about the fifteen million dollar budget, um, and I think we shouldn't be looking at. You know, oh my God, it's going over 15 million. I think we should be looking at the fact that we have a budget in front of us and we need to determine what is the best way to uh, uh, manage this budget uh, for the benefit of the people that we take care of. Whether that needs to go over 15 million or not, I don't think should be the question. Anybody else want to weigh in on this before we? Yes. Um, um, my view uh, is it's not, uh, I want to look at the proposed budget versus the previously budgeted amount and the actual amount. Um, at least the taxpayers. You know. So uh, yeah, that's my. One of my primary concerns is what are going to be the implications of, for the uh, taxpayers with any of these proposed hmm. budgets. Hmm. Have your records or your books finally been cleared by the end of everything is now done as far as there's no. 2017 is closed. And then you have all your payments and everything else. Okay. That's good. So um, the actual. So the actual was 13873615. The proposed is 15139. So that's a $1.3 million increase over the actuals of last year. That's and a whole bunch of money. And we, were, we heard in the last uh, meeting that that is almost entirely in salary. Well, yeah, about 600, 700,000. You, you, you haven't been. Um, at, at the next delegation meeting, you'd be voting on the NBC contract. Um, so that th those those are in there, all those increases. Um, so if we subtract that, what are we down to? Reduce it by seven hundred and twenty thousand. What do we start? I, you know, my impression there was going to be uh, some information presented to us um, along those lines. And you know, I would like to see something in, in writing along those lines to compare to the proposed budget. Yeah. Yeah, we see that.
explain this to them. <clears throat> is this with the rate incre uh, pay increases? Yep, there's a column for raises, and then there's another column for holidays and buyouts, which is part of the union contract. Okay. The union contract raises are 5%, non union is 3 Of particular note is that there was not an increase in 2017. Mm -hmm. So this is just a one-year CBA. It's there was zero for 2017 and being proposed and negotiated as 5% for 2018. So you can consider it a two-year. Do you have totals for these columns? I can go through. Yeah. Um, <coughs> under the contract. Correct. Yes. Um, had there been discussion about trying to move to multi-year contracts? We had that prior years. The, there was serious discussion, but in order to meet the, the deadlines, there were a number of issues. Really, what was decided is that there's new paid union leadership, a new leadership inside, and this. We really need to rewrite. The, the present CBA is so poorly written. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees that it really, we can't just keep putting lipstick on it. We need to, we need to, we need to rewrite that, and that can't be done quickly. So the, the goal was the staff had gone without a raise for one year to make minimal changes for one year agreement and come back with a, a more comprehensive review. Because I'm convinced that there are things we can do within the contract by changing the agreement that can be better better for staff and also better for, for management in terms of, of some policies and procedures, <coughs> the amount of sick time, the amount of, of benefits that, that should be looked at, that haven't been looked at in 20 plus years. Questions, thoughts? Yeah, isn't it hard to look at those numbers when the labor market is really tight like it is right now? Well, it's because the labor market's tight. Um, what we have is essentially a CBA that was developed 20 plus years ago when the labor market was very different. When we're also dealing with a different generation of workers. 20 plus years ago, people came to the county and looked to, looked to businesses for benefits. Our younger workers, they don't want benefits. They don't care about benefits. They want pay. So I would like to be able to work something with the union that might allow new staff to, to grandfather existing and to bring other people in at competitive rates, I agree with these benefits. but with, with, with lower benefits, right. to, to cater to what the market wants. Um, you know, we can romanticize the idea that we're being paternal and trying to protect our staff, but it's an expensive way to give people <coughs> something they don't want. Yes, exactly. That makes good sense. Oh, can I have a question about the budget in general? Um, my understanding about how this works is that the major driver of what your both revenue and expense side of your budget is what your actual census assumptions are going to be. And based on this sheet that you sent out to us, uh, it would appear to me that you are probably estimating census figures to make sense of what is actually likely to happen because, in fact, both the expenses and the revenues come back less than, than what we budgeted last year. Um, so it, as far as what we actually expect to happen in, in the subsequent year, we expect both those numbers to come in less than the budgetary figures. Um, and therefore, the impact on the taxpayer, because you're returning the funds to the general fund, uh, at least that's what you're proposing doing, is going to be substantially less than what it would be if, in fact, we were actually going to spend the amount of money that it says on the budget. Although last year we did, we even though our revenue was less, our expenses were also less, so we were favorable overall budget by four hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. Your expenses were more or less than than your revenue was less. Correct. Which shows that you're doing a good job managing the nursing. Is Appreciate it the it. the census? It's not just the census. It's really the payer mix within that census. Right. What percentage of skill? What percentage of private pay? And you know we we're one hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars <laughs> off on our revenue. Um, <coughs> not not percentage-wise. That's pretty close on $11 million. It's, very, it's very close. And the best that can ever be is yes. That's. So if I read this correctly, the base pay with everybody added in is $6,305,000. Mm -hmm. And with raises, there's $230,000. Uh, this is because we're on the tape. Uh, holiday and buyouts, add to 330, 336. 
thousand, and there's odd numbers here. Uh, retirement buyouts are thirteen thousand five hundred thirty-eight for a total of six million eight hundred ninety-nine thousand three hundred ninety-one dollars. So that's an increase of six hundred thousand dollars between the raises, the buyouts, and the retirement buyouts. Mm -hmm. Six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That also the also includes the extra extra position in dietary as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this buyout number. Um, are we buying out uh, people who have lots of holiday backup? What is the, explain to me. Accrued vacation and eligible accrued sick time. Sick time over 35 days is bought back. Mm -hmm. And when they retire, you're required to pay that money. Correct. Yeah. CBA requires it. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I believe you were just explaining the retirement buyouts column. Um, the holidays slash buyout, um, does that have to do with the, uh, the move to double time for holidays? <coughs> Correct. That's, that's the total for this column, the 336 is the double time provisions that you're looking at. What should translate the savings into agency and Overtime. Good point. Okay, where are we going from here? Anybody want to make a motion or we need more information? Anybody with more questions? Um, in terms of uh, rates, is there a possibility of how how do private rates get adjusted and what's that process? Annually, Paul and I take a look and make a recommendation to the commissioners, and, and that will be forthcoming. The budget assumptions do not assume a rate increase, although I expect um, I've done I've started the, the process. What's difficult is that we don't have any apples for apples comparisons in terms of long-term care. In skilled care, you'll find single rooms with private bathrooms, but in long-term care, they actually don't exist. What I'm going to be proposing to the commissioners is an increase for what I like to do, even though it complicates things, and I'm not sure that Paul likes it, is that we protect the people we have with a minor increase but then step up to market rate. So somebody looking at us from the outside for the first time can say it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. We're not holding them hostage. And, and, and eventually, actually, we're actually very competitive now. We're at $330 now. Do you actually see a revenue increase when you raise your rates? Because in the hospital side, we can raise our rates all we want to, but we don't actually see a revenue change when you raise your rates. That's because hospital never does private pay. Yeah. On private pay, it, it's, it's realized. Right. We could raise our rates all we want on Medicaid, Medicare, and it's you're right. You think right. we'd have to discount it. But on, on private rates, it's, it's actually collected revenues. Now, if you, you know, why not charge $500 a day? Well, because then we would impoverish people prematurely. So you, it's, we, we want to stay competitive. Can, can, at this point in time, be premature to project that what you could increase your revenues by with a reasonable rate increase in market rates like you just proposed? It's, you know, I'm expecting that we'll probably pick up 500 days at about $5 a day. It's probably going to be about $25,000 increase in, in net revenues. Okay, $25,000 increase in net revenue is not going to make a substantial difference no. to the bottom line. Okay, thank you. That's just my question. Yes, sir. Um, with the uh, holiday double time, um, uh, consideration that you're making here for $336,000. Um, does the budget reflect uh, any kind of offset to that in terms of agency or other uh, costs? We didn't this year because we don't know how it's going to impact our budget this year. That's their hopeful is that there's going to be savings, but we didn't make any changes to those lines because we have no idea. But it is reasonable to assume that it's going to have an impact. Okay. And we did recalculate in nursing. We went through um, the salaries again, and we did find some savings in the LNA and MA line items. So that 
will be a reduction to what we currently have. Um, if you look at the current figures in your budget, it's at 2.9, um, and we revisited and looking at the holidays and who we have vacant and who won't be entitled to those holidays anyway, um, we have brought that down to 2.7. So we did find some savings in the nursing budget. Good. And that's reflected here? It's, well, it's re we didn't put it on any, no, we didn't put on any new papers okay. until we came to meet with you, but that brought our, budget, our bottom line budget down to, I believe it was 114. 964 476 from the 15140. So, what was that again? Um, down to 14964 476. 14964 476. And that's out of line 007. Well, there's, it would be multiple lines because the Social Security retirement, all those change in reflection too. Got it. So. But after all those adjustments are made, it changes the bottom line to that four. And if we remove the extra position in dietary and increase his overtime budget? Do you want to take that out? Mm -hmm. How much do you want to in overtime? Because he said that the, his overtime was, um, was short, so if we remove the position and just increase his overtime, it might suffice to say. Mm -hmm. It might actually cost us more money, too. Get the numbers. Thank you. If we remove the position and increase the overtime, because we don't know what the position it costs. Right. We don't know what the hourly rate or what it is has been presented, other than just just a hundred thousand, hundred two thousand dollar increase. So if we remove that position and increase the, the overtime line to maybe five thousand dollars, then there will be significant savings over. Uh, funding another full-time position with benefits. Would you concur, Mr. Mark? <coughs> Not necessarily, because the people you're giving overtime for are people who are at a higher level of uh, your dietary uh, <coughs> that they have. The, the other, this line, this this cook position that he's filling is a lower level position than the people that that, that person is going to be covering for when they're on vacations or whatever. You may end up paying overtime at a higher rate. It may actually cost you more money. You'd have to look look at the numbers and see. So I'm just going to do just a quick. Um, so if you're replacing a forty-five thousand dollar position with five thousand dollars worth of overtime, where where would the over cost be? I'm not sure five thousand dollars of overtime is going to cover the amount of overtime he's got. Well, he's been doing it with seventeen hundred dollars, so I figured if we at least double it, plus a little bit more, should suffice for for his current needs. Given that there's no increase in census and no increase in volume, I right. find it hard pressed to increase the staff. But as his employees get older, they get entitled to more weeks of, of uh, vacation time and, and various other things, which mm -hmm. increases the amount of time that he has to cover. Correct, which would, which would cover the overtime instead of <coughs> increasing a new position with benefits. And the benefits alone. <coughs> um, if, if if we needed more in, in the overtime line, would you be um, amicable to, to throwing in a couple more thousand throughout the year as we do our line, you know, as the line transfers? Well, he's gotten by so far with the same amount of staff. So, I, right. If it's a five, if you move it from seventeen fifty to five thousand, and we move the position, there would be more overtime for other people to fill those positions. Okay. And, and if we needed more. We would go through the, the current line item transfer. We could, but I would encourage him to work within his overtime budget. Because telling somebody that we're going to be able to move money into it will just encourage to do that. Yes. Uh, and at the same time, according to his uh, description here, um, at the end of the year, he was in the salary line under by $26,000. <coughs> So we're not punishing him by reducing his budget, we're just taking that position away. Right. But also maybe maybe the salary line um, is a little bit high. Maybe move, take some from salary to move to overtime. I would 
would be hesitant to reduce the salary. That mm -hmm. gives him a little wiggle room to bring some people in as they're retiring. That way, we don't punish him for underspending. But just removing the position and increasing the overtime should be <coughs> sufficient. I, 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 I don't disagree with that concept. <coughs> how do you feel about that? I don't know. Um, I know that if I were running the department, uh, overtime is not as uh, uh, comfortable in terms of management as uh, having a position that I can use to move where I need to move it, which it sounds like this position would be. Um, but I understand uh, the need to control the, uh, the budget, and I understand the argument. So. Is that right? Is that number correct? Crisis? Yes. Yeah. And is it true that we don't know how much this position would uh, would be hired at? We budgeted for thirty-eight thousand. Thirty-eight thousand, including benefits. That doesn't include no. benefits. That's just. And that's a full okay. year number, and you're only going to be here half a year. I mean, we, by the time you hire the person, it will right. be no, that, right. No, that, that's as if they were here a whole year. No. No, the thirty-eight thousand is only fifteen dollars and uh, sixteen dollars an hour. Yeah. That's not right. That's not right to me. But you're. Well, cooks normally get uh, up to twenty dollars a year. Yeah, fifteen dollars an hour, six hundred a week, thirty-six and change a year. Okay. So. But that doesn't include benefits, retirement, right. Medicare. Right. Right. I mean, he's. Based well, out. all that's in here. Like there, all the, those yeah. lines are just not the health insurance. Health insurance is in the admin line. I think five thousand is uh, is is good for the overtime line. Mm -hmm. And removing that position. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Representative Marsh, you you haven't weighed in. Um, I, I'm okay with that. I'm not convinced it's going to work out, but I'm okay with it for this budget process. I'd I'd like to know what the actual numbers are going to be that we're going to fill in on here, but. Not to do with this motion, but following those comments, I'd like to see um, our worksheet updated with um, uh, with these numbers and any if this motion passes. Um, and um, I believe there was a, a reduction in the uh, LNA lines um, in the budget and a new budget total. Yes. So I'd like to see all that. Um, uh, I would be ready to vote on. Or approve uh, anything on the budget until all that was put together. Do you have that on the premises that you can do that? Yeah, we can. We I didn't change those because we didn't know. Okay. Because we're on a time frame so here for people that have to be somewhere. Right. Now, like, right. I mean, I like you know. Let's go with the motion that's on the, the floor for that particular. I take the five thousand, take the position out, and add five thousand to the overtime. overtime. Yes. Make the. Position, make the overtime five thousand. Make the overtime five thousand. Okay, we have a motion. To make it five thousand. Yeah, right. no, to make it five thousand. Yes. To make it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Thirty-two hundred and fifty dollar increase in that line. Right. To make it five thousand. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. Yeah. Anything else for you to adjust? And what was that for the record? Five zero. Five zero. Okay. Wait, I did better on my math today. Could you make those changes if you could and bring it back? And uh, we need to be out of here by 12.30. <laughs> well, I can't change the report, so do you want me to have to do it? All right. Okay. Okay. We have two. It has to get a telephone call, and somebody else, he's got to go. So that will leave us with three. We could still finish the budget. If it's yes. We have a majority. It's amenable to me. So. Besides the holiday m and a change and the dietary change, is there any other uh, proposal um, in terms of the budget? Uh, it, it would just be the capital. Yeah, and we have that. We have Bob's um, Which list? request. Yeah, he, um, he actually prioritized it. Yeah. Good. Didn't we move a minor, make a minor change of... Like twelve hundred dollars out of capital into seal coating and something. Yes, yes we did. Yep. But that should have already been done. So these are prioritized, which is great. Yes. Yeah, we made some changes on page four. Um, 
the environmental services. So that uh, Ed has his in input before you leave, Ed. I, I'm not trying to cut you out of the, the system. What can you say that we can, as far as this uh, capital expenditures, anything on here that? So, Bob, your ninth priority is the leveler. Uh, and uh, is that something that you can manage without that expense? How I can manage fine. Uh, it's the truck drivers that uh, had difficulty. Uh, and changing, oh, so this includes the engineering. Yes. So if that uh, approach rent is changed, then the likelihood that uh, this is going to be needed again in the next five years is, is minimal. I'm going to budget for it again next year if uh, we don't do it this year. Right. And keep asking for it. That was his question. Oh, I, I, I got it. Do you buy into this as far as the priority? Yeah. You don't? Yeah. I know. Okay. Just want to know if this is your same priority. I think there was some, in the new equipment lines too, there was some we, mattresses and everything else that were already yes. budgeted for. So we're not looking at that, we're just looking at the capital expenses on the additional sheet. Correct. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I don't have my folder with me, but the what was in the new equipment then? Um, the table and chairs weren't in the new equipment. What well, line is the new equipment? That was in uh, nursing and new equipment. That was for the mattresses. Yeah, it's in cabinets. Yeah. Right. Security cameras. The new recommendation for beds, headboards, rails, mattresses, mattresses, scales, carry bars, hooks, and lifts. And that's 54. 52,827. <coughs> Just I know the commissioners as a group voted as this the proposed budget, but then did you sense any feelings from, I know you not officially voting as the commissioners, but you sense any thoughts they have on this without? Um, just that the dock leveler was something, oh, you're talking about the new equipment? Um, I, are the beds still in the new equipment? This is the new equipment sheet. So I wasn't and then mattresses are on there. Yeah, we haven't removed any of that out of the yeah. department yet. No, I, I believe that the commissioners felt that those were all necessary. They okay. were needed. They weren't necessarily wants. They were needed. Okay, so that's the biggest one. I haven't changed them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll the sheets and we'll go from there. Is she doing a complete rewrite on the ACS? Yeah. Is That's that what, what you wanted? Right. Great. No. Now I'm, I'm confused. Is it fifty-four thousand on the new equipment still, or? Yeah. Well, no, we haven't touched it yet. Okay. This is fifty-two eight twenty-seven. Just want to make sure we have the right number. That's on the sheet they gave us. Yep. Well, on the budget says fifty-four. Right. Well, yeah. I'm confused. So maybe somebody just rounded up. I do that all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not, I'm not going to the pen. I'm getting up with the Hoyer lips. All right. 
and remember you were adding five a year and all that stuff. And when and we're still when we're still budgeting for five a year. Yeah, but I, five on here. you were going to get you you're still looking at used ones and used if you get some extra That's money. It's harder to find those. Yeah, we budget for new ones, but if we're able to find okay. reconditioned or used one, if a hospital is sometimes a hospital clean shop, we clean out. And if if Bob can find good used or reconditioned ones, then instead of getting five, we can get seven or ten. <laughs> We had a supply that we were able to tap for a couple of years, but that dried up. That's right. And how does that, how, how close are we to 50% having Hoyer lifts or, or? I believe as we sit, we're at about 60%. 60. But what we're finding is that more and more of our residents coming in are higher acuity. So that, you know, what we thought that would be 60% that will last us forever, our, our residents are coming in needing more and more care. We're trying to protect the backs of our staff better and better, so mm -hmm. we're going to need to continue on this five a year, probably to the point we're at 80% plus. And at that point, and Bob's already seen it, we're actually replacing lifts that we got six <laughs> years ago. So that, that I, I think we're going to be kind of locked into about five a year forever. When they don't work, do they uh, not work when somebody's in it, or are they just harder to operate? There's a there's a fail safe. You can always get them down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't collapse or something. <laughs> no, they, they 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 don't drop to the ground. Okay. There's a fail safe that you can always get them down. But you're not locked in the air either, so you can. Yeah. Okay. We can manually get people down, and Bob is able to swap out lifts, so that you know it's it's not not well, particularly easy. For some reason, the bed swapping out the lift. Well, the, tr the track is long enough that I don't have to do it over their head. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't. That could be an awful oops. Yeah, I don't want that. How many you got now, Howard? Sorry, Bob. How many you got now that are in working order? Oh, they're all in working order. Uh, so how many you have? Fifty-ish. Uh, basic budget question. Um, we're looking at whatever the bottom line is uh, once these adjustments are made. Um, and we're approving uh, the expenditure budget, the revenue budget, uh, and capital all separate. How, how are you? Uh, well, I think we accepted the revenue. We accepted the last revenue year. last time. Okay. So that's already done. Uh, we'll do the expenditure and then we'll go over the capital one more time just to make sure we have it right. Okay, and do you have thoughts on the capital that uh, you think should be adjusted? I'm going to leave that up to Bob. I, I know he's prioritized, but... Um, so, relative to uh, what I heard in a couple of months ago from the budget that the commissioners sent to the delegation, um, with uh, money taken from the excess that we have, you're suggesting that there could be a budget <laughs> a of work for tax increase. We're wrong, sir. And that, that includes the capital budget? Yes. Okay. That also includes offsetting the increases with some? Yes, understood. Fund balance. Right, yeah. understood. Which we have done many times. Mm -hmm. It's a separate question, but while we're waiting, we talked about this fund that was to provide for residents' uh, uh, quality of life last time. I forgot. Doobie fund. The Doobie fund. Do you have a spending policy on the Doobie fund? Only that, I don't know whether it's official, but only in that uh, uh, the home has always come before the commissioners to get the okay to spend for them. Right. Uh, but my understanding of the way these funds usually work is one uh, can create a spending policy in that the fund can uh, spend 3% or 4% or, or whatever amount allocated to quality of life for residents in a given year. I don't believe that. No, there's no spending. That's in not in it. They gave a lump sum. They gave a lump sum. The stipulation which goes to the general public. General public. Right. The way we manage similar funds at the hospital is the hospital trustees adopted a spending policy oh such that the, the monies would go towards the purpose of the, the person who endowed the funds. And then we could bring those monies into the budget for that purpose and specifically fund line items for the budget uh, appropriate to the purpose of the fund. 
and, and that way the, the fund was utilized in a rational way and became part of the budget. Kept as an endowment. Exactly. And, but, but what it required was the uh, trustees adopting a spending policy for the fund. And in a similar way, I think you guys could probably adopt a spending policy for the Doobie Fund to make those monies more accessible and usable on an ongoing basis. Who makes the decision? Commissioners in the end, how that's spent? So as the commissioners want, it's not the Doobie Fund people have, do they have a separate board or anything? No. No. Okay. So, so you could adopt the policy. Of course. Yeah, I do. I, you know, my, my question is, would you consider doing something like that? Uh, not for this year, there's not enough time to do it for this year, but at some point in time before making the next budget so that uh, we can approach that in a, in a more rational manner. I think they gave her 250000 Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I looked around the Okay. And you spend all the years like well, presumably you're getting revenue on that money. You don't just have it sitting in a savings account yeah. somewhere. Uh, your girl that mom's might be the most appropriate place for that. That's for sure. Uh, she's just printing them right now. Right. Well, on the uh, capital budget for the nursing home again, um, I know, uh, Representative Avalani, that you said uh, that you would leave it up to Bob. Um, giving him a, uh, a stare uh, about what he uh, might uh, want to do with it. But as I recall, in terms of the revenue for adventure and reconstruction, $30,000 seems uh, to be <coughs> minimal at best. And uh, if the loading dock leveler, et cetera, is going to come back to us in a subsequent year, I would uh, suggest uh, talking about adding $10,000 to the entrance reconstruction and uh, waiting for the loading dock issue to be dealt with in a subsequent year. If we low, if we went ahead with Bill's idea and just give a round number of 125000 and let Bob have control of how he spends it, might be... Well, I'm suggesting a uh, $30,000 reduction, which would be one thirty nine. So, one forty. Is that it? Yeah, we can go to one forty if you'd like. Bob? I'm sure I can make, make do with that. I believe that in our discussion last time, we determined that there'd be offsetting revenue to the resident room entrance reconstruction. And so, uh, insofar as there's offsetting revenue, they have to cut that out of the budget. I agree. Yeah, um, I don't want that to come out either. I think, that, I think it should be a little more. Yeah, that's a long-term uh, uh, return on investment. Right. right. Okay. That's, I mean, we're going to make a motion on, our, on the 140, going down to 140. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. No, that's fine. Nobody's opposed. I'm sorry, so yes. it's at 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. Uh, going, to going, going. determine the, uh, where that goes in the sequence. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Did you run on that back? Yes. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, sir. <coughs> And I have had the pleasure of listening uh, by audio to all the unions up to this point. And I remember a conversation that was had uh, on this handout here, breakout, uh, over to the holidays and buyout. I understand the process, but I have a question. Sure. So my understanding is that the, is it the union contract now will uh, account for 11 holidays and if you were to work your holiday you would get double pay. Correct. Okay. Which the uh, incentive is that you won't have to bring other people in, continuity of service and so forth. And do I understand that this is the same language that's in the sheriff's contract also? And in the jails. Done previous to this or just added this time? No, it's always been in there, as far as I've been here. So have 
from the time it was instituted, has there been a savings occurred by doing that? Not having to call people in and so forth? Well, I should back up a little bit. We, the holiday buyback has always been there, but the double time, that's, that, that's our caveat. And you pulled that from somewhere else that it's already working, or where did, you pull, where did that come from? The double time? Correct. That, that was pulled in, in from negotiations with the union. It was, a, it was a union position to bring it in, or it was the administration's position? I believe it was administration's position so to help all alleviate. All I'm asking yeah. is where has the administration seen this work? Nowhere. So I guess my so my my number here, and other members are going to ask, and my intention is when we get into the process that we're going to take the recommendations of the uh, subcommittees moving forward but I want to be able to answer this question. So when I look at 336,199.3, mm -hmm. is part of that number buyouts or is that the difference in going to 11 holidays at double pay? That column, that column is both. It's holiday slash buyout, so it's, every, it's both. Mm -hmm. so, is, so is the increase in the neighborhood of $200,000 to implement that new for the double time? Correct. That's that's the number one. Uh, and you don't have to give that to me now. Okay. I think Kathy has it. I think Kathy yeah. has yeah. it. Would not the appropriate place to ask <coughs> that question be in the context of whether we're going to approve or not approve the collective bargaining agreement? Right. Which is coming up at our next uh, delegation meeting and not in the context of our preparing the nursing home budget, because we have no control over the collective bargaining agreement at this subcommittee. Right. I, I don't care where the conversation happens, if it happens next month or this month. Right. I want the answer prepared so it's ready at that meeting. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. If, uh, you would in, if you would indulge me on the opportunity to make the question, I would like that. Okay. And I thought at the last meeting we talked about this and that there was a, uh, a history of this having worked in other environments. Is that not the case? Did I misunderstand? The that? holiday buyback is currently in, and has been in the, in the jail contract and in the uh, sheriff's contract. Right, the double time. No, the holiday buyback. Right, and the double time, I thought we heard that it had been something that has... No, that was an incentive that, that we proposed in order to get people to work. Because what the nursing home is finding that people are calling out on that day. Right. So we have to get agency just to cover. Right. I understand that. So it's yep. been done no place no, else that you know of. The, well, the only thing that's similar is in Stratford, instead of paying time and a half overtime, Stratford pays double time yeah. for over, over, overtime. What's, you, what's unique <coughs> and troublesome here and was part of the collective bargaining agreement is that not only do we have holidays here, we, under the existing, today's collective bargaining agreement, a staff member can take their holiday a month ahead or a month after, so it's so we 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 don't just have the holiday to deal with. We have all these essentially floating holidays around each holiday to deal right. with, <laughs> and, and and it and it creates staffing crisis. Um, and that was part of the consideration for what's what is ends up being exceptional. Double time is certainly higher than than typical to get us out of a even more difficult situation. And currently, you pay time and a half. First, on, on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And this will cover all holidays? This would be all, all the approved holidays. Yeah. Hmm. So if, if I could. Yeah. So you'll, you'll package some statement back to at least my attention or to uh, no, no. the chairman's? Yes, Corbin. And I just wanted to reemphasize the point that Representative Butler had made in that that part is, is a new program. Whether it's whether it's great or not, I don't know. But I'd like to know what that number comes to. Yeah, and do you anticipate that will go to across the street? That there's those other unions who are gonna want the same thing down the line? I don't know if I don't even know if they work on holidays. I don't, know. I don't even know that. I know the jail does. I think sheriffs do too. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Okay. Are we, are we clear on the request? Well, uh, up in dispatch. Are you ready to make a motion? Are we clear on the request for, from Chairman McConkey? Yes. Are you may have a proper request? Okay, perfectly good request. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move the new budget as presented. You want to vote as you're going out the door. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It passes. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure he was here to be part. Thank you, Doug. Good idea. I, I think Mark's comment about the collective bargaining agreement is a good comment. So I, I have to admit, I, I really hate the idea of saying the precedent of starting to pay double time for holidays and for paying for more holidays without any evidence whatsoever that that's going to work. On the other hand, I, I, the collective bargaining agreement is not something that's part of the budget discussion. It's part of the collective bargaining agreement right. discussion. And insofar as the only choice that we have is to approve it or not approve it, and the consequences of not approving it may be rather catastrophic. Um, I'm not sure that we have a whole lot of say in that. Well, we do. Yes or no. And I'm going to make it clear right here and on camera that, that the RSA 100 does not allow me to give you anything but the cost items. So if you want to compare uh, contracts or you need to bring your own, I will not be providing contracts to anyone. I'm only providing you the cost items that are, that are moving forward. So. So we don't have co contracts for you talking about the, the jail, or what are you talking about? Contract for the about employees? the nursing home. If you want, <laughs> if, if you think you're going to get a contract to compare, you're not. You're getting two pieces of paper, and they're going to be the cost items for the double time for vacation. I mean for holidays, and the five percent increase. And that's by law. I cannot give you anything else because you're only voting on those cost items. You're not voting on the contract. So I just want to make that clear right up front. So when you say approve the contract, you're just saying approve the final number. Because you can't you can't go back and approve things that, that haven't been brought forward to you. You can only approve the two items, the five percent increase and the double time for holidays. It's the only thing you're gonna Oh be no, approving. okay, I understand yeah. that. But those two okay. But those are only two things I'm going to be giving you. If you, if, if you oh, no, 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 that's the only two I was thinking okay. about. So I thought you said, I, I know it was explained last time at the last delegation meeting that I'm going to be giving you a contract to compare to where it came from. I'm not. That's something that you need to do on your own if you want to, or you're just going to vote on <coughs> the $700,000 increase. And is the contract at this point public information? It has been ratified by the commissioners, has not been ratified by the delegation. But is what's been ratified by the commissioners? It has been ratified by, by the nursing home employees. By the union and the, and the commissioners. So if, the delegate, so if people wanted to say, I would like a copy of that, did you need to provide it? I will not provide it. Your office will provide it. And we, will right not, to know? we will not provide the contract. We'll provide those, those two cost items. But you, you can go on the website, on the labor website that has all the contracts. Oh, You're just not going to print them for us? I'm not going to provide them for you, right? I'm going to provide the two cost items. They're on two separate pieces of paper. Hey, are you saying the law does not permit that? The law does not permit me to do that. And I believe it's because the only things you're voting on are two items. You're not voting on anything else in the contract because that has not been brought forward for your ratification. Your ratification is just the cost items, the seven hundred and fifty dollars, thousand dollars. I just don't want to have an unfair labor practice filed against I the county. I and I'll be and I'll be happy to, to, to provide that that law to each one of you. Well, that's consistent with what always happened in the board of trustees. The trustees at the hospital you never were part of collective bargaining negotiations. Right. Um, so I. I uh, I may not be happy with that, but I understand where it's coming from. Because if someone doesn't like it, like a, some language in the contract, they could vote no on it because, and, and not even look at the cost items. You, you know what I mean? So it's up to commissioners to pick that off. Yes. That's their job. That's yes. their job. Okay. Somebody has oversight on it, so it's the commissioner. But we are looking at changing a lot of that language in there because 
you know, for you to be able to take a holiday a month before you even earn it is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's nuts. It's yeah. absolutely nuts. And you could quit your job. Leave. That's, That's the problem. You could, take the, you could take it, get paid for it, and then leave two weeks later and nothing we right. can do. I was not going to that that's, move in that. It's really well, well, it's that, and then I find it disturbing that it hasn't been fixed up to this point. It's now we're 2018. We're, we're, I'm, I, I'm, I well, hear you. because this is—I'm not blaming you. No, we we went last year for negotiations. We didn't get anywhere. Yeah. We did this year. This is the only way I can change it. Yeah. Is offering the double time. On the other hand, healthcare contracts—I've uh, seen worse provisions in healthcare. Contracts really? Than what you guys said. No. So. I'm not happy with any of that language, and it hasn't but, been. But you yet. offered the double time, but they didn't give up moving the holiday. Yes, that that is all gone. Okay, it has to be on the day now. That was, right. that was part. Oh, I'm sorry. They that that was part of the deal. That's, That's why it was such a premium. Make sure that is in your discussion with the delegation. And it was a close call from changes. what I understand. It was. Yeah. They held up. I mean, it was. It's, yeah. they they like it that almost did. It's, it's yeah. like the earned time benefit. I mean, I'm so happy you guys not did that. that that's, it's <laughs> Okay, no, that's good. I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought that would, they got that still, but that's been no, wiped off no, right that's, now yeah. on, on the day. Yep. Okay. So good. They, don't, they don't work that time. They don't get double time. Right, correct. Which means there could be savings at the end of this year. There could be if people leave. You know, I mean, they don't get their, they don't collect their holidays only when they, as far yeah, as they've been. If somebody calls in sick that day, they're not getting that holiday pay. No. Like they don't work the day before or the day after. They, they don't, don't get, get that. No. Right. And you also have right. cost savings as far as you're not calling the agencies. That's, right. that's the piece that's that we're that's looking the, to that's save. That's the piece that really is expensive. That's the little piece that we're looking to save. Yeah. Is there a cost differential between holidays, calling in on holidays and calling in on a regular work day and then calling in on a weekend for our agency? Mm -hmm. Is it the same price? No. It's a modest increase yeah. for holidays and, and weekends yes. for agency, but not huge. Yeah. Okay, but the weekdays are pretty much... What they are, it's just there's an increase in holidays and then an also. And there's a slight increase at nighttime too. Yeah. Yeah. Third shift is even more okay. because they offer some incentive for their third. Well, shift. they have to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, everybody, for coming. We'll turn the meeting. Good. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for running over there. And Doing your paperwork? No, you, no, you no. did it here. I did it here. So okay. it just, uh, yeah. And well, did you get the four? Well, what we took yeah, off of this? Did you, really? yeah. no. you know, we'd be happy Capital to improvement? Mr. Chair. I'm going to say for that, we did the previous No. Oh, we did not. We'll have to do that one immediately. What's that? Previous minutes. Yeah, we would improve the minutes the last one. Oh, because we, we did. We recessed the meeting. We recessed it. No, no, so that's no, no, but you did, but you did approve the September 17th, right? And, they, and I submitted those to Cheryl for posting okay. because they were. Yeah, so, 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 so I think we're fine at. Yeah, we just adjourned our meeting yeah. from the other day, so this is good. Uh, the last minute change to Bob's list of debt, is that reflected in your new budget? The well, last minute change. The capital expense. No, that, that, no, that, that's not in the nursing home budget, that's in capital. That's, that's a whole separate sheet. Yep, and I've noted that, and I'll catch it. Don't worry, it's not there. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Howie. Good job. Lunchtime? Yep.